This is how we used a Halloween survey to generate a few hundred dollars in sales, about 120 positive customer reviews on our product, and early adopter demographic information that we can use for targeting people with ads when we decide to run ads. The way we did it is we used Wix. Wix is our website host, and we just grabbed one of their templates for Halloween, and we made it as clean as possible. We said, we'll give you an early treat, uh, take the survey. So we made it an inviting button, super clean email that you can't get distracted on. Then that was connected to a type form, a type form survey. Type form is just like the cleanest way you can possibly do a survey, uh, but you've got to pay for it if you want more than 100 results. So if you get 100 people to answer your survey, then the 101 person, they're going to get something that's like, oh, the survey's not available. So pay for a membership if you're going to do a big survey and you expect a lot of answers. Um, anyway, Typeform has logic that you can use. So when you build your survey out, you have your questions and then you have your endings at the bottom. So if someone answered no to this first question, they would get this ending. I'm sorry, I give them my email, I wanna hear their feedback because I, I want them to have a good experience regardless of whether the product worked for them. So I got about 10 emails from this survey of people that didn't like the product. Five of them wanted a refund um, and we gave them those refunds. Uh, but otherwise, the rest of the people will go on to the next question in the survey, asking them for a review. Uh, and if we can post a review to our website on their behalf, and we sort of like, there's a Halloween treat at the end for those who chose correctly. So we're like, you know, enticing them in. If they said yes to that, they'd go to the third question, and that's where they can enter the information. They said what they need to include, because that's how our review is set up that I built onto our website. You need those at least three or four things. Um, if they said no to wanting to leave a review, they would go to the fourth question, which is asking why they bought the drain funnel and what their hesitations were. And fifth, um, it would tell you, we, we're asking for basically demographic information because it helps us find more customers. Um, but then the logic sort of just ties everything together. So you can see one, if they answer yes, they go to the next question. If they answer no, they go to an ending. Same thing here. So it's like a really simple logic, but it's awesome that Typeform lets you do that. Uh, and now let's look at some of the some of the data that resulted from this. So I cleaned it up from how I downloaded it, but this is what the data is. Uh, basically, reviews are in this column, and then I could, so right now I'm posting like a review every day or two from this list because these are our real customers. Uh, if I were to ask 150 people to just leave a review, it's not going to happen. But because it was easy and built into Typeform, they were able to give that information quickly, and so there was less friction. Uh, the second column is their hesitations, uh, and I can learn from what hesitations they have, and I can make videos that address that. Um, I can also figure out, you know, some people tell me which video convinced them. It was the one where they saw me talking about the product after there was a demo of the product. So I can understand what types of videos I need to make for high conversions. And then lastly, demographic information. Uh, so you can see in the survey, I kept it very general. I gave some suggestions to get people on the right track, like age, gender, housing. Uh, but I didn't make it multiple choice because if you do that, then you're sort of limiting yourself to the questions you ask. If you leave it open, people will, are willing to give you, I think, a lot more information than if you were to have 10 more questions at the end of this survey, because then they're gonna be like on question five or four and be like, oh my God, there's a million questions. And so even with this five question survey, I had a drop off rate of like 50%. Um, so 360 people started the survey, like 200 or like 180 finished it. Um, but so if you do multiple choice survey on demographics, I would just make that the entire survey, like five questions, get your demographic information, be done. Give them a coupon code at the end. So that was actually, we gave them a little, uh, really good coupon code at the end. That was like, made the product like $5 or something instead of 15. So anyway, by leaving this open answer instead of multiple choice, it makes your data, um, 
Uh, I'm already at five minutes. Okay. It makes your <laughs> your data analytics a lot harder. So I basically had to take and read um, all of this stuff. <laughs> and I would write down, I had a spreadsheet. I would write on, like, handwrite the information they're telling me. And then I had my sister read that back to me, and I entered it into the computer. It took probably four hours, to be honest. Uh, and then to be able to see that data just visually, we have age. We can see now we should target people between the ages of 20 and 35. Um, gender, female, and relationship status, rent versus own. A lot more people are renters that have this product. Um, they live in an apartment. This is not enough data. Has kids, yeah, not enough data points. But it seems like when you're just a single person, uh, you're not as likely to want to buy a drain funnel because you're okay with cleaning out your own hair from a hair catcher as opposed to cleaning out multiple people's hair. Uh, that's not your hair. Uh, so yeah, I made sure to lead with the things that are actually targetable in ads when you run on Facebook or TikTok or wherever. If I were to ask things like, do you have long hair? Do you have curly hair? Straight? Like, you don't want to ask demographic information that is not actually targetable in an ad campaign, in a targeting campaign. Uh, I hope that helps someone <laughs> because honestly, the data I got from the survey blew my mind and uh, I'd been meaning to do this for a while, but finally did it and I'm really glad that I did it because now we have a clear path on who our customer is and our marketing will be driven off of this data.